going on everyone it's mike aka sinister moon coming back at you with another episode of shooting the shit saturdays i have had like no time for anything lately it sucks you know i feel like i go to work i take i i, I work i shit and shower and shave and repeat and sleep and repeat and that's like been my life Except for like the very little amount of time that I can set aside for gaming. And that's about it, you know? Like, I mean, uh, yeah. Time has just really been stretched thin. But anyhow, it's good to be back making another episode. Uh, my game room is fucking trash, man. Like, I have so much extra stuff in there that I've been trying to sort through and get rid of. Like, my folks are probably going to be moving, and I was kind of using them as, like, a storage kind of deal, you know, like a free storage kind of deal. And so, since their, uh, their house is up for sale, uh, I had to move my shit out. And so, <laughs> uh, I got it all stacked up in my game room, and I've been chipping away at it, but I've been also, you know, aside from work and gaming and stuff, I've been repairing a lot of video game stuff for extra cash so I can work at my arcade cabinet and so yeah it's like four in the morning right now but it still technically counts as Saturday night so we'll go with that anyhow we'll jump right into it into the what I've been playing segment uh, you know I've been playing Rezogun is that what it's called? yeah Rezogun by House Marquee the same um, developer as uh, Super Stardust HD and I fucking love Super Stardust HD I actually did a review on that forever ago I kind of wish I could re-edit that and put it back out you know as something better because it could have been better you know but I didn't really know how to edit back then I still don't right <laughs> but either way um, it was actually bought for me by Dumas the Miz however you say your name, dude. I appreciate it, man. I, I feel totally Hollywood now. I'm, I'm fucking big time, man. I have people sending me games and shit. That's unreal. Like, I, I don't even know what to say. Like, um, yeah. I hope to uh, do a video on that game someday soon. Or at least I hope. I can't make any promises. But either way, super big shout out to Dumas. The Miz. How do you say your name, dude? So, tell me how, you, how to say your screen name. I should know. I've, I've seen some of your videos. Um, but I don't know. So, <laughs> anyhow, yeah, thank you. And so I've also been playing Pac-Man Champion, Championship Edition too, And I've been enjoying it. Uh, you know, I think it's a little bit harder than the first one. Uh, but it's great, you know. Like, I mean, I haven't really played it all that much. Um, so I don't really have much to say about it, except for it looks nice. It seems to play nice. Cool. I am bred. <laughs> this is one of those games that was like... The title was so ridiculous that I had to have it just based upon the title. And, uh... It, it was in a flash cell. And I think it might have been cheaper for PS Plus members or whatever. I don't remember. Either way, it was super duper cheap. It was like three bucks or something like that. So I had to buy I Am Bread. And it's basically, it's kind of like Marvel Madness or a game similar to that where you're, you know, trying to maneuver whatever you are, whether it be a piece of bread or a bagel or whatever. You're trying to maneuver around these courses to get to the end without falling off the side and stuff like that. It's pretty fun. I like it. Uh, I, I, I can't say that I'd pay full price for it, but it, it's pretty funny. It's different, and I like different sometimes, you know? Uh, another game I've been playing, uh, I haven't really played it much, but I did buy it. Anyhow, it's called Mother Russia Bleeds, and it's cool. You're, you're just kind of like, it's kind of a over-the-top kind of view, running, run and gun kind of deal. Like, I like it. Uh, so far, I like it. It's pretty bloody. And uh, it has some, like, uh, interesting subject matter. <laughs> but then again, I haven't really played it a whole lot yet. That was another one that I picked up 
during the flash, so, and, uh, yeah, I, I will get to it eventually, I'm sure. Uh, Batman, I got that for free from Plus, and, you know, I, I started it up and realized it was kind of interactive, kind of like Heavy Rain or something like that. And so I was like, man, this would be perfect to play with my girlfriend, because she's like the biggest Batman fan that I've ever met. Um, and so, yeah, like, I mean, it, it plays like a fucking Batman cartoon, essentially. So, yeah, I'm going to wait and play that one with her. And then uh, I had a game suggested to me uh, by, you know, and I'm probably going to butcher the screen name, uh, but the, the Poners, Ponerizes, or something, the Ponerizes, uh, I don't know, you listen to OKS, that's, I know that much, uh, if you have a different name on YouTube, hit me up, man, like, uh, because I, I, I have not been able to match the screen, uh, the PSN name to a different screen name or whatever, uh, but either way, he suggested that I play Score Rush Extended, and I'm so glad that you did, dude, because it's fucking off the hook good, like, I really enjoy that game, it's like, it's basically like one first style bullet hell game and it, it you basically just go until you don't go anymore you know you, and you fight a bunch of bosses and stuff all in a row and it's just fucking good i mean i don't know what else to say it's just good and it kicks my ass it's fucking hard as shit um but I have a feeling that it's one of those games that once you learn it, once you get it down, it'll take multiple tries, but once you do, you'll be able to get through it. And then once you're able to get through it, uh, you know, you can get through it even better the next time and every time after that. But yeah, I fucking enjoy that game, man. Very good suggestion. Um, as far as pickups go, you know, I didn't really... Oh, before I get into the pickups, I should mention, uh, I've mentioned it, I kind of mentioned a few times already that I got Plus. I have Plus. If you don't have me on PSN, I'm, of course, Sinister Moon on there. So, add me, you know, we'll play some games online. Let me know what you're playing online, and maybe I'll be like, hey, I should play that too, you know? So, uh... Yeah, hit me up your game, online game suggestions. I'm not really much of a bro gamer, you know, like, uh, not too into the first-person shooter games. Um, some of them, maybe. Depends on what it is. Let me know. You know, if, if it's not as much of a bro game, like Call of Duty or something like that, then uh, let me know. Uh, but as far as pickups go, this is pretty much my only physical pickup that I got this time around. Uh, this is Wipeout Omega Collection. And, you know, I'm not very into the Wipeout games. It seems like I always end up getting a Wipeout game. Uh, I have, I think it's Wipeout HD for my Vita. And the reason why I get them is because I oh, they flock to me for cheap for some reason. I have no idea why, but I don't really get into them all that much, but yeah, so the story behind this one, I found it on Craigslist Market, or Craigslist, the Facebook Marketplace, and the guy only wanted $3 for it, and so I thought it was a scam, you know, and so I hit the guy up, and I'm just like, is this for real, you know, like, are you really selling this game for $3, and he's like, yeah, I don't play it, I didn't really like it, and so he's like, I know it's worth more, but I don't care, I just, you know, 3 bucks is fine, and I'm like, okay. Well, let's meet up. How about this day at this time? And and he is like, okay, yeah, I'll meet you in this city and blah, blah, blah. Because he lived, I don't even know, like an hour and a half, two hours away or something like that. But he, he was going to be in this one town or in, in this area. So I had to go, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes out or so uh, to this town called Berthen, which is this itty-bitty little town. And we met at uh, A&W. It's one of the only A and Ws that I know of still existing or has like stayed existing all these years because Bertha is basically like locked in a time capsule. Like I mean, it's it's a weird little place. It was like the first time that I'd been there in like eight, nine, ten years or some shit, and it was exactly the same as last time I went. <laughs> but either way, yeah, it was legit, three dollars, and uh, I'll probably trade it away because I, I popped it in, played some of it, and I was just kind of like, yeah, I'm just not digging it, you know. But uh, yeah, three bucks can't go wrong. 
And so, uh, next on the agenda, what, what, I, what else have I been doing, right? I've been working on my arcade cabinet a lot, actually. Uh, you know, and I'll make a video of it eventually when it's like totally done or whatever. Um, but I replaced the T molding, and so that was huge. And I got the paint, uh, you know, remember, it, if you saw the prior video about it, um, some noob brushed some, like, latex paint onto it, and it looked like dog shit. And so, uh, I got the paint off on both sides, which is really cool, and it has, like, that white, uh, wood, I forget what the hell that sheet of wood is called. There's a name for it, but either way, um... <laughs> The white stuff, uh, the white stuff, um, it looks good, it looks way better now. And uh, as far as joysticks go, I have my um, uh, Suzo Hat uh, competition hooked up here for player two. And this one's kind of better than like the stock because it has cherry switches. And so the cherry switches really add a lot over the generic switches that a lot of Suzo apps typically come with. I got this from Tornado Terry off of eBay. Uh, and it's pretty good. I like it, you know? Like, I mean, is it the greatest joystick out there? No, but is it the worst? Far from it. However, for player one over here, I have the um, uh, IL Euro stick. And so, if you, you know, you could probably Google it and find out the back history or whatever, but the gist of it is, is that these two guys used to be homies and worked together, and then they split off, and, uh, you know, these guys still make the quality sticks that you want, and then these guys kind of make a not as high quality version of it. So, uh, honestly, you know, for five, ten dollars more or so, you can have the IL Euro stick, and I highly suggest the Euro stick because it just has this really satisfying click to it, and it just feels good, and it blends with your music. Whereas this one's a little more high pitched, and it just it doesn't have like the same kind of feel to it, but it still feels good, but just not like this. This feels legit. This feels kind of not as legit. So yeah. Either way, I did that, and, you know, I wired them up, and I still have more plans for my arcade cabinet. Like, I still need to get uh, a control panel overlay, and the reason why I haven't done that is, well, other than lack of funds, right, um, is that, uh, you know, I have other plans for the control panel, and, um, you know, I showed that Miss Pac-Man joystick before, and I kind of, I'm thinking about mounting it in the center of the control panel. And I just think that would be cool as shit because and then I'd have my sticks for shmups, you know, and if a friend comes over or if I want to play games that require two joysticks like Robotron or something. Um, and then I'll have my good four-way authentic Miss Pac-Man for playing Galaga and Miss Pac-Man and even Phoenix, which is what the cab is. But yeah, so that will be cool. And then I need the side art, and I need a, the backboard for the back of the cabinet still. And, you know, once I got those pieces, I'll probably keep it as is for a while. But then, of course, I do want a CRT monitor in it. And, uh, you know, obviously, once I'm able to get more space and get a, a different arcade cabinet, I will return this to a dedicated Phoenix machine like it rightfully should be should still be right you know like, um, because yeah I, I would love for it to be you know a restored phoenix you know and if i decide hey i don't really want this anymore a restored phoenix fetches a you know pretty pretty high sum you know about a grand you know like depending like maybe eight nine hundred you know or something but i don't know i i really love this cabinet i don't really plan to get rid of it um, so yeah, like I mean honestly I'd rather just get, you know, a bigger place and then have more arcade cabinets and not get rid of this one, you know. But if it came down to it and I decided, hey, you know, I'm just kinda of bored of it, then you know I, at least I would, you know, get a good chunk of change for it as opposed to uh the little bit of change that I put into it. So either way, love my arcade, been playing a lot of games on there. Got Dodon Patchy 2 behind me, and you know, it's just 
I love all the Dodon Patchy games. Some call, some people call it Dodon Patchy, and I, I don't know which one's right. Maybe somebody can tell me which one's the right one. I always say Dodon. But yeah, other than that, uh, you know, I haven't really listened to a bunch of new music or anything lately. Uh, just kind of the same old. But I did see something really interesting the other day, or at least I found it really fucking interesting. Walmart sells vinyl records now. Isn't that a fucking trip? And they actually had some good ones, like they had some Metallica, like they had like the good Metallica albums too, you know, like uh, uh, Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, I think I saw Kill Em All, uh, the Black Album, and Justice For All was there. And then they had like a bunch of picture discs, a bunch of, uh, you know, random bands, like some Iron Maiden, and what else, like Leonard Skinner and, and some generic stuff, and I think I even saw some Beatles. Uh, but either way, that's pretty cool, man. Like, it's cool to see vinyl records back on the shelf. Uh, however, I do gotta warn people that, you know, pr vinyl record pressings nowadays, aren't as good as like the 70s or like even like the 80s and the 80s it started getting kind of shitty and then like once they're on their way out the pressings got really really bad and like i mean think about like playing your record and it just sounds like shit right out of the package and it maybe skips around maybe the stylus uh doesn't properly pick up the grooves and it goes skidding across the record like, shit like that tends to happen with, like, new records, like, that aren't pressed well. You know, like, a lot of them aren't gonna be, most of them aren't, like, 180 gram versions. Like, they're, they're not the thicker, better vinyl. And, and so, you know, keep those things in mind. Like, they, they definitely are value-pressed records, you know? They're probably, like, the 12th printing or something stupid, you know? Um... But yeah, it's still cool. Nonetheless, it's still pretty fucking cool to see records on the shelf again. And uh, I do plan to buy a couple just to support that because I think that's cool. And I, I approve of Walmart carrying something that I actually want to buy. <laughs> um, other than that... Yeah, let's talk about the arcade drama that's been going on because there's been like a lot of it. Man, I, I left my pipe over there on my couch, and I'm, I'm really stoned anyhow, but man, I, I wouldn't mind a hit right now. So that arcade drama. Yeah, so it, the first that I started hearing about it was uh, Todd Rogers, Mr. Activision, getting called out on his old... Acti or his old... Uh, um, <laughs> uh, dragster score yeah like apparently like there's been a bunch of tests done one of them was done by Ben Hack where he actually like tried to recreate the perfect game on original hardware and that was he basically proved that he, he, Todd Rogers could only got the score that he got uh, was at 5.51 and uh some other dude, I forget his name, but he, like, went in through and, like, tried to do a perfect game in, in the emulator or in emulation. I don't know which emulator he used or whatever, but he basically proved that 5.51 was impossible. And then uh, that got people looking at Todd Rogers's, Rogers's other scores, and basically it's believed that they're all fraudulent their bullshit and that sucks man because I've met Todd Rogers and you know like I thought he was a really chill dude and so uh, that sucks you know if he was a cheater but at the same time even if he was and he lied or whatever I think that's kind of cool that he at least knew enough about the games to be like yeah this is my score knowing that it's like unachievable like, I really do think that he had to know at least enough about the games to, you know, come up with what score was impossible, right? But then again, like, Activision actually said that, it, you know, his score was verified 
uh, by the techniques of the time, or at the time, like which was sending in a picture, like a Polaroid. And so, like, I don't know. Like, I mean, Activision says it's legit, and Todd says it's legit, and so I don't know what to think on that one. You know, honestly, I think they should have just left it alone. I mean, it's an old fucking record. It's the oldest longing, long running on running ongoing game record ever held and I think they should have just let him keep it honestly like I mean once it gets to the point that it can't really be proven anymore I don't know I mean there's other versions of the Atari 2600 out there and it's really easy to make them run slower or faster I mean there's like this little like adjustment on the board and I, I think that people have been overlooking that, you know, and that's kind of interesting. Maybe it's not on the 4 switch, I thought it was, but I know it's on the Heavy Sixer. So it could be on the Heavy Sixer Telegames version too, I don't know. I don't know what that is. I'm not that high tech. <laughs> Either way, that sucks. I feel for Todd Rogers. I don't know if he lied or not. Um, it, it most certainly looks like he did, but... Whatever, you know, I think they, I think Todd should have been able to keep his record, personally. Um, and then that leads to Billy Mitchell, right? And so, there's a couple people on the internet that I've come across that I gotta say, like, are fucking asshole, poser, fucking shit talker kind of people. Uh, and I'll actually name them. The first one is, uh, Cat Dis Disparta, Disparta. The, the slut, I don't know, she goes by gaming bitch or gaming slut or something stupid like that. And she has like a, a gaming blog and her boyfriend has a bunch of games or something. So she thinks she's like a journalist because she has a blog. And she's always like talking shit about people and trying to disprove everybody. And it's like, well, who the fuck are you? Like, I mean, I... no, idiot. And then idiot number two is, uh, what's his name? Patrick S Scott, Scott, Patrick Scott Patterson or something like that. He goes by the original PSP. And this guy's always out to prove everybody wrong. And he believes he's some sort of gaming historian. And he believes that he's like some kind of like, uh, like, like he, uh, saves games from the landfill and he, and he restores games, and, and he's like some kind of good Samaritan for doing so, and he's a, you know, like he believes he's like part of the gaming industry because he, he finds, you know, people throwing out consoles and he, you know, cleans them up and sells them on eBay, so he thinks that he's like part of the gaming industry or something, and it's like, whatever, man. Like, both of those people have blocked me, and I'm so glad, like, that they took that liberty to block me it's a, it's an it's a true honor to be blocked by them because i was so sick of seeing these fucking asshats everywhere around the arcade forums and everything and, and you know i mean this guy seriously believes that mario was never known as jump man okay miyamoto has actually said that he was known as jump man and that he was named Jumpman for a brief period. And it actually says Jumpman on the fucking arcade game on Donkey Kong. He was known as Jumpman. That's, it's undisputable. I, I, he found some flyer. And so on this flyer, they refer to Jumpman as Mario. And so he believes that he was never known as Jumpman, that he was always known as Mario. And it's like, no, dude. The creator of the fucking game has actually said he was known as Jumpman. And before that, he was known as something else, Mr. Something or rather, I forget. But either way, who cares, man? Let it go. Let it go, dude. I, but yeah, these ass clowns are always trying to fucking disprove Bill Mitchell. And, they, and you know, this guy has talked shit about Billy Mitchell and, and uh, Walter Day and all that. And I don't know. You know, I've never met him, but... He was always a douche, like, in crying to the cops, like, oh, somebody took a picture of my house, and just all this drama that this guy carries around with him. And, yeah, so whatever, but I've met Billy Mitchell on three occasions now, and every time that I've met him, every time that I've talked with him and everything, the dude's cool. Like, he, 
is very knowledgeable, is a legit gamer, like, whatever, you know, like, I, there's, I don't know, you know, and I've met Richie Knuckles, and Richie Knuckles is friends with Billy, and he seemed like a legit dude to me, not a poser, definitely a cool dude, I love his, his movie, The King of Arcades, and, uh, and I've met Walter Day, and he's also a very nice guy, very legit, you know, and so whatever, you know, I, I'm not gonna side with those fucking posers that, you know, I've never met and everything over the people that I actually have met and that I know are legit and that have, you know, done something in the scene, in the industry. But yeah, supposedly Billy Mitchell's score, uh, you know, one of his Donkey Kong scores was f fraudulent, the one that he held for a long time, before King and Kong and everything. And it's like, well, I, I think that dude's already kind of proved that he could do it. Like, I watched him play live, and he didn't, like, break a million points on Donkey Kong or anything, but he definitely got up there. One year, I think he did, like, 600,000. And every year, I think he did a little bit better. I think he did, like, maybe seven or 800,000 or something like that at the Kong-offs. It was around there. Either way, the dude proves that he could play Donkey Kong, and honestly, I don't even think he was really wanting to try to win it. Like, I think he was kind of more, uh, you know, on vacation, and, you know, that's cool, you know, whatever. <laughs> but he still shows up and competes. He's still a really legit gamer, whereas, like, people like the original PSP and Cat are just nobodies, you know? And so, like, I mean, what the fuck, you know? Believe what you want about Billy Mitchell and, and Todd Rogers, but I think uh, that they're both cool dudes. And like, you know, don't don't listen to the fucking posers, man. Like, and it, it, if you think that Kong off or King of Kong was actually legit, like it was like totally real and everything, you're a fucking moron. Like it, it was meant to be, like Billy Mitchell was the villain and Steve Weeby was the good guy or whatever. Like, and that's what made it for, that's what made for an interesting story, that was the point. And speaking of that, uh, so Billy Mitchell was on this show, awful show, really sh stupid host that thought he was funny and shit, but he, he just wasn't, I forget his name, because he's very forgettable, but, uh, Billy Mitchell was on this guy's show, and uh, Richie Knuckles came on, and they announced the that there's going to be a King of Kong 2. And so I'm super pumped about it. I bet it's going to be awesome. And I hope that it's a little bit more legit, you know, than the last one. Like, And I, I you know, I do want to see Billy just come back and kick some ass, you know. Like, uh, he's probably not going to break uh, the current score holder's score because it's, it's fucking up there. It's the... Uh, what's his name? Tim? Is it Tim? Either way, some dude recently um, scored the highest score ever on Donkey Kong, and so I really doubt that Billy Mitchell is going to beat that. Like, I don't think anybody will ever beat that. Not even, like, Hank Chen or something, you know? But, but yeah. It'll be interesting to see what they do with it. And, I don't know. Personally, I really I would like to see Billy Mitchell just show some other fuckers up because I know he has that ability and you know regardless of him officially being the first um, person to play a perfect game of Pac-Man or not like he is like I mean other people have played what they consider to be a perfect game of Pac-Man but it wasn't actually by definition the perfect game of Pac-Man look into it like you'll understand what I mean if you don't already but yeah, arcade drama. Sorry, I just kind of went off on a little tangent about that. But that arcade drama, it, it just hooks me. You know, it just grabs me and pulls me in and says, listen to this shit. And it's, it's, it is interesting to hear. Um, I don't know if you guys get into the arcade drama or whatever. Um, <laughs> but those classic arcade gamers, man. There, there's some uh, interesting folk, <laughs> <You know? laughs> but anyhow, I got some cotton mouth like a mofo, and I think that I want to take some more hits and drink some Diet Mountain Dew, and so that's what I'm going to do.
probably listen to some good goth industrial music or something. And, you know, and of course I'm going to play some games. I've got my PS2. Or, my PS2. Man, that's... Wow. I've got my PS4 on over there on the TV, and i got Netflix on the TV next to it. Matter of fact, let's take a look. Give you a better look at the side of my arcade cabinet here. You can see it's nice and white now. But some fucking prick, the person that had it before me, drilled a fucking button size hole in the side of it. And so I'm going to have to bondo that shit. But that's okay. But you can see that this is definitely looking a lot more legit. I still need to hook up uh, the coin slot lights. Um, but yeah, I got that lit up. The marquee. And it's, it's looking pretty fucking rad. And that's all looking good. And then here's the other side. And that side came out, came out way nicer. Excuse the dog toys and shit on the floor. Uh, not dog shit, just, yeah. <laughs> that would suck. But, um, yeah, and then the team molding went on really nice. The only mistake is really right here. And that's because the cabinet kind of has a crack. And, like, I think somebody kind of, like, glued it. But you can kind of see it sticking up there. And then plus some of that white wood is chipping. And so I need to uh, fix that up a little bit. But it doesn't really bug me that much because the rest of it is silky smooth. So, yeah, hey, let's go look at my snake. Why not, right? Oh, she's hiding back there. Yeah, I'll have to bring her out a different day. But yeah, there's my PS4 going next to the Netflix. Got my bong out and stuff. Uh, but yeah, my fucking... And there's my kitty. And, meow. And then my dog. And my other kitty is... Sleeping in her room, I think. But anyhow, guys, that's enough out of me. Um, yeah, I didn't expect this uh, to go as long as it did. So that's cool. But uh, yep, time to play some games and kick back. Enjoy my only day off for the week tomorrow. Yay, day off day. Thanks for watching, guys. And gals. Why does everyone always say guys? I should stop saying that.